Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make mostly crystal videos, spiritual videos, small business videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos just about every week. And I have some cute cats. I do have my own crystal shop, CosmicGeology.com. I also have a personal channel and a bunch of other links which will be linked in the description below. She's biting me. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most common fake crystals on the market so that you know what to look out for. I did a video like this like a year or two ago when my channel was new and that was back when I didn't even have a script for my videos. I just had a couple of bullet points so I kind of just went off on confusing tangents. So I'd really like to remake that video to be a little more clear and concise. Plus there's been some new fake crystals on the market since I filmed that video which I would like to talk about. So let's get some definitions about fake crystals out of the way. Not all fake crystals are created equal. There's a couple different things that can make a crystal inauthentic. The first up is mislabeled crystals. And this, in my opinion, is the biggest offender for fake crystals on the market is a genuine stone that is being mislabeled as a different genuine stone. For example, lapis being confused with sodalite. This is way more common than straight up glass or plastic crystals. Second, we have heated, treated, and dyed crystals. Many stones start out as natural, but are heated or treated in some way to enhance or change the color. A lot of times, low quality stones are dyed to enhance the color or add a completely new color just to make this low quality piece a little more enticing. It's actually not uncommon for stones to be heated ever so slightly to enhance their natural color, sometimes so subtly that people don't even know. For example, carnelian and blue apatite are very common stones to be heated just to bring out the color that they already had. Aura quartz and all other aura related crystals, titanium quartz, these are also falling under the treated category because they start as natural stones and then they are treated with different elements that give the stone a special coating. So these have been enhanced in some way. And lastly, we have fake crystals, which is what today's video is all about. This is crystals that are completely glass, plastic, man-made, lab-grown. They are not natural in any way. This seems to be the smallest category of inauthentic stones, but this is what people worry about the most. Especially for beginners, people get really concerned that their crystals are glass or plastic, but this is really not common on the market at all. I almost never see plastic crystals. Most fake stones that I've seen are in jewelry or cabochons. It is really not very easy to recreate a natural crystal in a very believable way. Fake crystals are usually very suspicious looking and they are very easy to spot with just a little bit of knowledge and experience. I won't go too much on a tangent here because I talk about this in most of my videos about fake crystals. Fake crystals are not as much of a concern as a lot of people think they are. If your crystal looks real and doesn't feel like plastic, it probably is real. It is just not possible to recreate stones like labradorite, moonstone, tiger's eye, lapidolite, selenite, you can't just recreate those and have them look like the actual thing. So if your stone looks like a real stone, it feels heavy like a real stone, it looks like other pictures of what that stone is supposed to look like, it's pretty likely that it's a genuine stone, especially if you got it from any somewhat reputable crystal shop. So these fake crystals really aren't as much of a threat as people make them out to be. I'm going to be discussing today some of the most common ones I see on the market, but these are pretty easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. They don't really look like natural stones for the most part. There are a couple tricky ones, we'll get into that. A lot of these are widely known to be man-made or fake, but some of these might be new to you. And if you like any of these stones still, knowing that they're fake, that's totally fine. A lot of these are well known and still loved in the crystal community, even though they're known to be inauthentic. The problem comes in when these stones are being sold as authentic natural stones when they aren't. As long as it's disclosed that these are man-made or lab grown or treated, it's totally fine to purchase them as long as you know that's what you're buying. So like I said, today's video is going to be all about those fake stones, the man-made, the glass, the plastic, the lab grown fake crystals. If you'd like to see me do another video to talk about mislabeled crystals and heated and dyed crystals, be sure to let me know because I would be happy to do it. 
So let's get right into it. First up, we have lab-grown clusters. If you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I hate these lab-grown clusters. They have many names such as phantom quartz, ghost quartz, chlorite quartz. I have seen a lot of people, including reputable shops, be fooled by these because at first glance, you think it's a natural crystal cluster. And the worst part about these things is that they can be pretty expensive. You can tell these things are fake because they come in many different colors and they all look exactly the same. They have the same size, they have the same shape, they have the same rounded bottom as if they were grown out of like a cup or a bowl, whereas natural crystals like an amethyst cluster, the base is totally irregular, not perfectly round. And you can see that the crystals on the bottom aren't really growing out of anywhere, like there's no matrix rock or anything. They're just very unnaturally weird looking when you see them up close in person. I've even seen ones that are like I think they were green and they had like one yellow crystal growing out of the middle and all of them had one yellow crystal growing out of the middle and that's just such a red flag. A lot of these also have a fuzzy looking surface like as if they're growing little needle-like fuzzy crystals off of the points and that's just not what a natural crystal formation looks like. It almost looks like they're trying to replicate a natural spirit quartz cluster but on spirit quartz, you can see that the little crystals that are growing on the surface are actually crystal shaped, they're little points, whereas these fake ones are kind of like a needle shaped crystal, which is not something you would see in nature like this. The points of the crystal cluster is also a really weird texture. They almost look like they've been like shaved or chipped away. Whereas if you look at a normal crystal face, like on an amethyst cluster, the points are going to be smooth, not weirdly textured. Anything that looks like these, no matter what the color is, these are unfortunately all lab grown. There are natural versions of like chlorite quartz that would be a quartz cluster with green inclusions, but once you look at them side by side, one of them is obviously natural and one of them is very suspicious looking. There's another variety of these man-made clusters called alunite. A lot of the times these are labeled as a lab-grown cluster, but not always. I've actually also seen this labeled as rose quartz before. And if you're familiar with rose quartz at all, you probably know it does not form in any sort of cluster that looks like this. At first glance, this might look like a juicy, high quality, perfect color amethyst cluster, but similar to the other lab-grown clusters, these all look exactly the same. They're all around the same size, same shape. There's no impurities, no imperfections. Anything that looks like this, unfortunately, is fake. Next up, we have Blue Obsidian. Unfortunately, Blue Obsidian has make, been making the rounds again in the crystal community, and I have to be the bearer of bad news that this is just fake glass. While Obsidian is a glass, a volcanic glass, this is just straight up man-made glass. While all obsidian is glass, not all glass is obsidian. It also comes in many other crazy colors, most commonly light blue, dark blue, and green. So if you see anything labeled as obsidian and it's like perfectly transparent and it comes in a crazy solid color, it's unfortunately glass. Natural obsidian can show a variety of colors such as in rainbow obsidian, but it doesn't really look anything like this. Natural obsidian is not going to be totally transparent and so vibrant like these are. Next up, we have a relatively newer find on the market, which is fake rutile or demortiorite geodes. These are most commonly sold as like a gold coppery rutile geode or a blue geode called demortiorite geodes. Shout out to Crystal Pacifica on TikTok for talking about these. That's how I found out about these. Unfortunately, these have fooled a lot of people because natural rutile does kind of look like this and rutile can be found on a matrix rock or included in other stones so it kind of made sense that it could grow like this but actually these are totally man-made and really really inexpensive to make these are not valuable or rare at all so don't waste your money on these these fake rutile geodes can also be created within a natural stone like i've seen them being created within a genuine azurite rock with fake blue lab-grown crystals on top of it to make it really look like a natural stone. The coppery gold color and the blue are the most common that I've seen on the market, but there could be other colors, so beware of any of these really needle-like geodes. It's not really a natural crystal structure. Genuine rutile does not grow like this. I've also seen some of this fake rutile being created in the cabochons. They'll surround it by fake clear quartz to make it look like this 
rue tile had been growing in a natural stone, but this is a totally man-made concoction. Next up, we have smelted quartz or cherry quartz. Smelted quartz is unfortunately a crystal I personally got fooled with back in my early crystal collecting days. I bought a yellow and a blue smelted quartz tower at a crystal shop because the person selling them to me was boasting about how these were amazingly ethically sourced crystals. And of course that sounds amazing, so I was sold. They left out the part about them being totally fake and man-made though. Smelted quartz has a wispy appearance on the inside, which looks nothing like a natural crystal structure or any sort of natural inclusions. These can come in any color, but I most commonly see them in blue, yellow, red, gold, or white. Red smelted quartz is known as cherry quartz, and this is probably the most common one that I see. Just about everything labeled cherry quartz is unfortunately fake. Fake malachite is a very common fake stone that we all know and hate. Fake malachite is so dull and plasticky looking compared to the beautiful natural malachite. It's so easy to tell the difference in person, especially since fake malachite is so much more lightweight and plasticky feeling, whereas genuine malachite is a pretty heavy stone. Genuine malachite just has so much depth and texture and really cool patterns. Sometimes it has a little bit of a sparkle and fake malachite is usually just made of like three colors in weird stripes. It's so ugly to look at compared to natural malachite. Similar to fake malachite is fake rhodochrosite. This basically just looks like a pink version of fake malachite. It's probably made out of the same resiny plastic material. I don't see this super often, but I have seen it a few times in like tiny little carvings, beads, or jewelry. Malachite and rhodochrosite are both on the more rare and expensive side, so it makes sense that these fakes would be created, but they don't do a very good job of mimicking the natural stone. Opalite is a very common and popular stone, but this is actually a man-made glass. When you look at this crystal up close, you might be able to see the swirling texture of the glass or even bubbles inside. There is no natural variety of opalite, so if you see anything that looks like this, it is fake. I guess opalite does resemble natural opals a little bit, but it's pretty easy to tell the difference because opalite doesn't really have any flash of colors like a genuine opal would have. It's a bit iridescent and glowy, but there's no rainbow flashes. Goldstone is another very popular and common man-made crystal that you'll probably see out on the market. This is often given the name sandstone, golden sandstone, or even sunstone. You can tell the difference between goldstone and any other natural stone because goldstone is completely uniform throughout with no texture, no crystal structure, no imperfections. Goldstone can also be found in a dark blue and a dark green color. Next up we have cat's eye, also known as fiber optic stone. These are crystals that are man-made glass created to mimic the natural chatoyancy that some crystals have, such as satin spar or tiger's eye. A lot of these crystals look just like satin spar except in crazy colors. Now cat's eye is a real type of crystal, but anything that looks like this is man-made glass. While this does look a lot like satin spar selenite, you can tell that it isn't because when satin spar selenite is dyed, the color is not as vibrant, it's more patchy, and selenite has a much lower hardness than glass would, so selenite would scratch really easily, whereas this won't. Next up, we have another relatively new fake crystal to hit the market. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fake man-made spheres. This includes fake garden quartz, fake rutile spheres, and fake pyrite spheres. These spheres look like natural crystals, like a genuine clear quartz with really cool inclusions, and it looks like the crystals inside the sphere are natural stones, like natural pyrite, but they are not naturally growing like this. They are another man-made concoction. The giveaway that these are fake is the perfect layer of clear quartz right above the matrix or inclusions. So it'll be like this much inclusions and crystals in this much perfectly clear quartz with no inclusions whatsoever. And in a natural stone that has inclusions, the inclusions will be spread throughout, especially when it comes to something like garden quartz, you'll see inclusions throughout the whole stone. There won't just be a big chunk of clear quartz that has no inclusions at all. The matrix of these stones also looks really suspicious. This is not the natural kind of host rock that these crystals would be growing out of. So like I said, it looks like a lot of these are natural inclusions, like there will be a natural rutile in here or natural pyrite in here, but it will be covered with a layer of glass or reconstituted clear quartz to make it look like this inclusion was naturally growing in clear quartz. So for the pyrite version of these, pyrite can be found in clear quartz, but it's never gonna look like this, like a perfect little field 
of pyrite cubes with a perfectly clear layer of clear quartz on top. That's just not how it would naturally form in nature. If there was pyrite and clear quartz, it probably wouldn't be perfect little cubes, first of all, and it would be evenly spread out through the stone, probably with other inclusions as well. The very suspiciously perfectly clear, no inclusions clear quartz is a big red flag here. Unfortunately, this layer of clear quartz has just been glued on top of the stone. This was not found in nature, although some of the elements may be natural stones. Next up, we have fake moldavite. Because moldavite is so rare and expensive, inevitably, fakes are going to be created. Sometimes with moldavite, it can be hard to tell what's real and what's fake. Some fakes are very obvious, looking extremely glassy and very artificially bright green. Moldavite is very expensive, so if you're getting a suspiciously good deal, it might be fake. A large chunk of Moldavite can be thousands of dollars. The largest size piece of Moldavite I've ever seen was like smaller than a palm stone, maybe palm stone sized, and it was thousands of dollars. So even a small piece, like a little piece like this, is probably gonna cost you like at least $30. Another thing I see often with fake Moldavite is that it'll be perfectly smooth around the edges and it will have some texture, but it kind of looks like the texture is only on the surface, like it doesn't go throughout the stone. If you've ever seen a real piece of Moldavite, it's normal for it to have a lot of texture, very irregularly shaped, and even bubbles from when it was created. This is normal for natural Moldavite. But fake Moldavite doesn't really have these holes in texture. The texture just looks so artificially created and like it's just on the surface, not throughout. Another red flag to look out for from Moldavite, and this might be surprising, but it's a certificate of authenticity. I've bought quite a few pieces of genuine Moldavite from multiple trusted sources, and I have never received a certificate of authenticity. Certificates can be so easily faked and they are usually created by the person selling the crystals themselves just to add legitimacy to their listings. Unless it's a certification from a reputable agency like the GIA, certificates don't really mean anything. Anyone can just create one, print it out, and sell it with a fake stone. So of course I can't say for sure that every Moldavite with a certificate is fake. I don't know, maybe some of them are real, but it's not a necessity when it comes to Moldavite. I've bought plenty of genuine Moldavite and never have received anything like that. And that's something I almost got tricked with when I was very first looking into Moldavite. I was trying to buy a real piece and I looked on Etsy and I was like, oh, well this one has a certificate, so I'm gonna buy that. I'm glad I didn't because it was definitely fake. Next up, we have fake and dyed amethyst beads, specifically beads. I don't see a lot of fake amethyst when it comes to any substantial piece, like a tumble, a tower, a sphere, but fake amethyst jewelry is like going rampant right now. Luckily, these are pretty easy to spot. Fake amethyst beads don't really look like a genuine stone at all. I've seen quite a few amethyst bracelets that look like this, and they don't look like genuine amethyst at all. These are beautiful, but they kind of look like an art project, like a painting, not like a stone. Bracelets like this are most likely plastic or glass with no genuine stone at the base. Now this isn't a fake stone like the other stones I've been talking about today, but this is a dyed amethyst. So while we're on the topic of amethyst, I figured I would mention it. This is dyed purple agate commonly being sold as amethyst. You can tell this is agate and not amethyst because the dark purple is way too saturated. There's perfect parallel banding similar to an agate that you would not see in amethyst. Even chevron amethyst that does have stripy white inclusions isn't so perfectly dark purple white with such a stark contrast and like perfectly parallel banding. I'm not sure why there's so many fake amethyst jewelry out there. Amethyst is pretty common. It doesn't really need to be faked. Next up, we have a really common crystal, which is bismuth. Bismuth is a super interesting and eye-catching crystal, but this is actually lab grown. It is made of genuine bismuth, the element, but it is not naturally found like this out in nature. In nature, it looks almost indistinguishable from just other silvery metals. You can even make bismuth crystals like at home. I've seen videos on TikTok of people just making their own with melted bismuth. So it's a really cool crystal to own, but just know that it wasn't mined or found in nature looking like this. And last for today, we have something called Fordite. Now this isn't something I see very common. I've seen it a couple times in cabochons, but I have seen people fooled by it thinking that it's a genuine crystal, especially from the name Fordite. It sounds like a stone. While it's really cool to look at, this is not a natural stone or a stone at all. This is actually layers of paint built up from hand spraying cars in automotive factories. So basically it's just old car paint. 
These are pretty cool pieces of art to look at, but despite the name, they are not a genuine stone. So that's all I have for today about the most commonly fake crystals on the market. Again, these are only ones that are man-made or lab-grown, not mislabeled or dyed and treated. So if you'd like to see a video on those other two categories, be sure to let me know and I'd be happy to make them. Also, be sure to let me know what other fake crystals you've seen out on the market. Maybe I'll make a part two if there's a bunch more that I find. But like I said, fake crystals aren't a huge, huge problem on the market. I think mislabeling is much more of a big problem. While there are a couple little sneaky ones that people in China are trying to create and pass off as genuine stones, for the most part, these fake crystals are pretty noticeable. So I hope this helped you know how to identify some of these common fakes out on the market. I hope you learned something new. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and check out my crystal shop, cosmicgeology.com. It will be linked down below and you can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.